Wednesday, March 6, 2024, and have joined the center fuselage to the rear fuselage. Show the connection here. Just starting with the basic connection so far. So these three rivets here, and then there's three rivets on the inside of this rib, and it's the same for all of the ribs all the way down. Obviously there's rivets on the underside of that skin, but once, once the skin uh, once we make these connections with the rest of the side skins, I'll do, the, do those rivets. So there's going to be more as the build continues to, to make that connection. Uh, right now we see these uh, jig pieces up here, this, this X, X pattern and these horizontals. These are all intended to hold everything in place for the skin attachments, which is the next step here. Um, I've got the skins laid out for the sides that are getting ready to go on both sides here. So jigs are in, skins are clean, deburred, and dimpled, and we'll start uh, installing these side skins throughout this area right here on both sides. So, I've joined the center fuselage and rear fuselage further with the side skins. And uh, side skins on the center fuselage are installed and riveted. The uh, front, these are all four millimeter flush rivets. And then where the connection to the carry through spars in these uprights, these are all four millimeter uh, button heads and then these are 3.2 millimeter horizontal on those stringers uh, 3.2 millimeter button heads that continue to go all the way down the fuselage there's plates on here for where the the um, wing insert goes just using the plates as a reference to make sure I didn't run the rivets into that area so when I put those plates on I didn't I don't have to drill out any rivets. So on the inside here, there's all these channels and stringers that are in place. And we've got gussets at the top of these uh, uprights into these angles, uh, really adding a lot more rigidity. So pretty much um, not much to talk about on this part. It's just a lot of riveting so starting to look starting to look like an airplane after installing the side panels the uh, firewall was next and um, I wanted to point out a few things about this firewall because I think it's really interesting one thing I've been thinking about as I've been building is you know the last time I uh, when I built the bear hawk um, I had a rotisserie the airplane was on a rotisserie uh, the frame the, the fuselage was completely on the rotisserie for not only for assembly but for fabric covering and ultimately painting. And I kept thinking about how can I do this with the sling? And I've not ever seen anybody, I've seen components like wings and, you know, uh, the uh, ailerons and so forth that have been on small rotisseries that people have been painting. But um, I've just been thinking about how can, how can the front of the airplane off of the uh, firewall, as well as the tail cone, support this so I've gone and looked at the tail cone and I can make a jig that would match up to that and I feel pretty good about uh, mating that to um, one end of the rotisserie but with this firewall now installed I'm really able to see how this is uh, completely integrated so that everything is completely supported which obviously that is for the engine and nobody's taken into consideration a, a rotisserie but with the engine, these points 
Uh, you've got gussets down at the bottom on both sides. You get gussets at the top, both sides. You've got this big heavy channel running along the top and the bottom and then sandwiched between those channels are two more channels on the outside that are running like this. And then you look at the mounting points for the engine mount and those are all here, here, and here, and here. And then I take this engine mount, if I can do this with one hand, and I put this up here and we can kind of see how this works. This is gonna be a really good flat surface right there to mount some, uh, make an, a mounting bracket. It will not deform the engine mount. Uh, I'll, do, I'll do something with maybe some bushings or something like that um, and use that for my rotisserie. So the, uh, there's more to be done here with this uh, firewall and I've got, there's gonna be um, a channel that goes around, not a channel, but a lip that goes around here for the cowling and so forth. So there's more to, to do with this uh, firewall, but I wanted to point out um, I'm pretty confident how this airplane is going to be very well supported longitudinally, um, vertically, horizontally, all of it in all axes that it will not cause any issues by putting this thing on a rotisserie. So unexpectedly, this has become one of my least favorite tasks on this. I don't like this. I don't like this firewall insulation. It's just a pain in the ass to work with. Um, the, on the manual, it says it's foam. It's not foam. It's some kind of a fiber fabric that's fire retardant. And this, uh, here's what I don't like. It's all crinkly and I like things to be perfectly fit, smooth. I don't like this crinkly look. It, it just looks trashy to me. Um, I thought I could really do myself a service by creating a template out of poster board before I cut into the into this and um, so I'd have all these locations perfectly cut out. That did okay, but not as well as I would have liked. I still have gaps up here at the top, um, gaps around here, and this piece right here became a little crooked. Tried to estimate as best I could for the uh, engine mounts, locations. Um, I just don't like working with this stuff. It, it's just, it's ugly. And um, I don't like it on my airplane. I know it's necessary. Um, this isn't really the kind of quality that I like to, to do. So uh, I guess I'll stop complaining about it. I understand its purpose. I understand why it's there. I understand the need for it. Um, I've used, I had to use these um, industrial, scissors to cut and that does a good job of cutting the straight edges but trying to cut it any other way like through these openings I've tried it a lot of different ways to do that without really tearing it up and making it look bad it still doesn't come out looking all that great so I use exacto knives with very sharp blades I would change the blade out every you know every time I make a hole I put a new blade in go to the next hole um, so there, there it is. That's my rant on this. Um, it's just not something I care for. I've included a few more things on the firewall, some riv nuts along through here, opened up some of these areas. Um, looks like there's a, this is going to be a exit point for a wire loom. Um, this is going to be the oil reservoir mount here. And of course the engine mount bracket is on but only temporarily. I have it secured with some zinc um, 5 16 bolts and uh, secured those from the inside just simply just using uh, these are just hardware store fittings or fasteners I should say um, only because I'm going to be using this engine mount for the rotisserie so um, I'm not going to uh, crank down on the the AN fasteners until uh, after I'm done with the rotisserie and uh, 
then once that once we get it off the rotisserie, then I'll use the regular AN-5 uh, fasteners to you know do the final mounting for the engine mount. The only thing I have left to do here before we start going into the rotisserie mode is I need to roll this fuselage on its side and finish riveting everything underneath between the center and the rear fuselage so that everything, the connections are all made um, and then we'll put it on the rotisserie. Yeah, so I, I decided against uh, rolling the, the fuselage on its side. I just went ahead and got underneath it and made the connection with those rivets there. So now we're ready for rotisserie. I think that'll be the end for this video and I'll probably feature one on just uh, how the rotisserie works.